Okay, let's continue on where we left off. You can see that my smart notebook is a little bit different because I updated it, so let's go to number six. All right, so we have some conceptual problems to finish out. So we have a, uh, a rod of uh, unequally distributed mass, and they want to know, is the torque about the ends the same? And the answer is absolutely not. If we hold it from this end, then we can see that there is light mass closer to the pivot point and heavy mass much further away. If we hold it from this end, we have the opposite. Now, you might think that it really doesn't matter, but because of the r squared part, right, if I hold it from this end, I'm just going to do i left, right, we treat this, all the masses at the center of each segment, okay? And so, I'm not going to worry about distance much, but this is basically, if I call this some distance r, I've got mr squared plus, and now this one is 1, 2, 3, uh, 2m times 3r quantity squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've got 3m at 5r quantity squared, and I get a really large number. Okay, you can add those all up. Um, so basically that's 1 plus 18, I'm, not, I'm going to ignore the r squared, 25 times 375. So we get a very large number. If I do it from the right end, so I'm going to do it right here, I write is 3m, I'm just going to put the 3 now, I'm not going to bother with the m, times 1r squared, so that's just 1 squared, plus now the 2m, which is just 2, times 1, 2, 3, 3 squared plus an m, which we believe is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 5 away, 5 squared. So we can see that this is just 1, 25 plus um, 18 plus 3. Whoops. So that's a much larger, uh, smaller number, so this one dominates. And we're going to see that as a common theme in the next one. All right, so the next page, uh, very similar, and you got to recognize it as such. All right, with the moment of inertia, if you haven't noticed by now, is that there is um, no negatives in this. So when we want to calculate the moment of inertia for each one, we just kind of want to do what I just did there. It's all MR squared based. So our pivot point is right there, so these three, one, two, three, are not contributing. So it's all due to these three columns, if you will. Okay, so if I do that, I'm not going to put any MR squared that's common to all them, but this is three masses, so I'm going to do A right here. Three masses, there's my 3M, and it's one R away, so that's one squared. Okay, plus, now I have three masses that are two R squared away, so I've got to square the two. And then the third one, I got one mass, that's three R away, so that's three squared. Okay, so I'm sorry this is so writing. The, the smart board is um, acting up. So anyway, this is 3 plus 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 9. So I get a total of um, 24. Okay, if we do it for B, and I can see that I don't have a lot of it very far away. So I've got 1, 2 is 1 R away. These are also 1 R away. The fact they're on either side of it is irrelevant. There's no negative, like I said, because if you called 1 negative 1, it would square out to positive anyway. So essentially I have 5 that are 1 dis unit distance away. So 5 times 1 squared plus I have 2 that are 2 away. So I'm going to do 2 squared. And I've got 5 plus... Uh, 8, which is 13. So that's significantly less than A. If I go to C, okay, I've got two of them that are one away, plus two of them that are two away, plus three of them that are three away. All right, so if I add those all up, um, I see I get a much bigger number. I think that adds up to, let's see, 27. I know that looks like a 33. 27 plus 12 is 39 plus 241. I don't think I've done that right, but close enough. All right, and then, and then we should anticipate C is going to be the greatest. I mean, there's a lot of mass that's really far away. D is looks a lot like C, but there's two that are close. So there's one, two, three, four that are one unit away. 
So that's going to be four of them that are one squared plus three of them that are two squared away. So that's uh, 12 plus 4 is 16. And again, notice the, those that pass through the pivot point don't count. The R is 0. Okay, so that gives us C, then A, then D, then B. All right, last one is a review problem of torque. Okay, it's just asking which one is the most difficult to hang, and that's not moment of inertia, that's torque. So we got to do an F times R. So for B, um, I'll come back to A. I'll do the easy ones. B, it's simply equal to the mass. Mass is the same for all of them, so I'm not going to put that in my equation. But nothing more than whatever length this is divided by 2. Okay, so it's just L over 2. And then for E, we see that it's mass times L. So this, this is double that. All right, for the other ones, we just got to do, that, and this is good practice for us, is how big is our lever arm for that force. So for A, if this is my line of action, here's my, I want to draw the lever arm from here perpendicular to the line of action. So there's my R for that. So based on trig, that's going to be the cosine of 30. Okay, so for A, it's cosine of 30 times the length of the full length of the rod. For C, again, here's my line of action. Best, easiest to draw the lever arm right there to the line of action. If this is 60, this is 30. So I see C is also cosine of 30 times L. And then lastly, D, uh, here's my lever arm. Here's my line of action. So that's going to be sine or cosine. doesn't matter. They're the same thing. A 45 times L. Okay. Um, the no closer the angle is to zero, the bigger the cosine is. I believe cosine of 60 is a half. So these two are bigger than this. Cosine of 45 is also bigger than a half. So um, if I've done my trig right, and you can back me up on this, that's definitely going to be the greatest. Um, then 45, D, A equals C, and then uh, B will be the least. Okay. Email me with any questions.